Chemotaxis, the movement of a cell towards a chemical attractant, is important for many biological processes, from the guided movement of a bacterium towards its food to the orchestrated migration of cells within a developing embryo. An amoeba called Dictyostilium discoidium has long been exploited by scientists studying chemotaxis due to an interesting phenomenon that these cells exhibit when food is scarce. Although Dictyostilium are unicellular, Starving dictostilium cells will migrate towards each other to form an aggregate, which ultimately differentiates into a multicellular organism. Remarkably, the cells migrate towards the growing aggregate in a very orderly fashion. The cells arrange themselves head to tail and move as if chained together. But the question is, how does this occur? Carole Perron at the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda and her colleagues have been trying to figure out just that. They already had some ideas. They knew, for example, that cyclic AMP is the chemoattractant. They also knew that when individual dictyostilium cells received the cyclic AMP signal, they ramped up production of an enzyme called adenylylcyclase, or ACA. ACA converts ATP into cyclic AMP, so in short, the response of the dictostilium to chemoattractant is to make more chemoattractant. Perron's group had previously shown that the chemoattractant producing ACA enzyme is enriched at the back of the amoeba cells. This therefore hinted at a possible mechanism for the head-to-tail migration pattern. So Perron and colleagues decided to take a closer look. So um, we ended up in this particular work now uh, showing that the enzyme is actually also uh, associated with these very dynamic vesicles that migrate uh, all over the cell as the cells are, are moving. And we then um, use a um, 3D reconstruction of, of cells that are expressing the ACYFP and saw that actually the back, the enrichment at the back is composed of all these accumulated vesicles there. So that led us to propose that perhaps vesicle trafficking is essential to mediate this asymmetric distribution. These ACA-containing vesicles, shown here in green, appear to co-localize within the amoeba with microtubules, shown in red. And as microtubules are the highways of the cell, it was not surprising that by disrupting these highways, using a substance called nocodazole, Perron and her team prevented the ACA vesicles from getting to their destination. We concluded that what's happening in the cardiovascular cells is that you disturb the, the microtubule, you lose the ability of these vesicles to be targeted to the back of cells, and then also to then relay the signal in a polarized fashion for cells to align in a, in a, a head-to-tail fashion. The loss of the head-to-tail migration pattern can be seen clearly here on the right. The theory was then that the delivery of the ACA-containing vesicles to the back of the cell enables the amoebae to locally make and release the chemoattractant. Well, apparently it's not quite as straightforward as that. So as we were looking at cells and they were migrating, we, we found this really uh, curious behavior that we kept on seeing these trails of little yellow fluorescent particles on the cover slip as the cells were migrating. So that was quite interesting to us um, because, of course, other people had shown that cells leave behind trails when they migrate. This was shown for, for many mammalian cells as well as for dictyostelium. But what was novel in our case was that we are now identifying that these trails actually contain signal transduction components. And in this particular case, this was the enzyme that makes the chemotractant. So then... Dictyostilium cells leave behind a breadcrumb trail of vesicles for their fellow cells to follow. The next step for Perron and her team is to confirm that these breadcrumbs do indeed contain the chemoattractant cyclic AMP. We, we don't know if you know, the vesicles are actually already containing cyclic AMP and they're just there and perhaps there's another re regulatory mechanism to, to release the cyclic AMP. Or do they also are like the little signalosome, you know, where they would actually contain everything and also be primed to be synthesizing it. So this is really where we're at now because what we're going to do is we're going to isolate the vesicles and do mass spec on them and then see what is there. You know, if the enzyme is there, <laughs> you would expect that the product is there, but you know, we don't know. The paper by Perron and colleagues is available in the December 1st issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.